This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Before you even sit down at your computer and start Access, I'm already ahead of the game here because I've started Access. You should design your database. So table structure, relationships, queries, forms, reports, etc. We are at a very early stage and I've drawn up the design of my first database here. I'm looking at creating an address book database. The aim of this address book is to store all the names and addresses and contact information for my friends. At the moment, that database will constitute one table. That table I've decided to call TBL contacts and the fields I would like to store information for are first name, surname, house, street, line two, town, region, zip or postcode, country to allow for the fact that some of my friends are international, telephone, cell, email, web, most people have websites, date of birth, notes, which will allow me to put in information that will not fall into any of the other natural fields, and then flag, which is quite a common field I would add to human records because it allows you to flag those records for you to do something en masse to them. Perhaps one thing that I have missed here is Facebook. So we'll put that in there. I'm going to put Facebook ID. So then I can store their Facebook ID so I can find them on Facebook if required. So this is the structure for my table in my address book database. Having made that design, I would then go to Access and create a new database. Let's file new. Blank database. What do I want to call the database and where do I want to store it? Well, I want to store it in Access and I want to call it Address Book. Okay. I'm happy with it being 2002.7 format. I want to keep the latest version of Access in play and then create. Now that creates you your blank database, gives you this dummy white table, which I'm going to close. And we're then ready to start creating our own table. So to create a table, we go up to create. There are three ways of creating a table in Access 2010. One method is to pick out a SharePoint list of contacts, tasks, issues, events, and custom, or an existing SharePoint list, but we're not connecting our database to a SharePoint server so that we have a choice of either table design or table. I would recommend that because you've created the design of this structure, already, although we've done it in Word, it could be done in Notepad or Note or any, any other application or just scribbled on a piece of paper, then we are best off going into table design where we can actually enter the correct details. We need to enter here the field name, then the data type, and there is a drop down of data types, and we'll look at these in more detail, and then an optional description for each of our fields. So we're now looking at taking our field names, which are here, and creating them as actual fields in our access table. So we want first name. Now deliberately, I am entering my field names without spaces. Now the main reason for this is that at some future point in time, I may wish to add some BB programming or to use this database on the web, in which case I will need to be using .NET, where spaces really can cause a headache. Access quite happily will manage any spaces and even programming wise, you can manage the spaces by delimiting them. But if you don't put them in the first place, then life becomes a lot easier. If you get in the habit of not using spaces, that's certainly a preference. We can use hyphens or underscores. Notice I missed out the forward slash there as well, because that could be causing a bit of trouble in the future. Country, telephone, cell, email, web. Facebook ID, date of birth, notes, and flag. So those are all my fields now entered without any spaces, just so we're not going to cause any headaches in the future. Now, we do now need to save the table because it's still called table when it's not been saved as yet. To save the table, we go to file and save. If you're taking the table that already exists and giving it a new name, that would be save object as, but we just need to click save because it hasn't been given a name yet. And we can call the table DBL contacts, which was its suggested name from the design. When it comes to naming tables, it's become common 
practice really to prefix the table with TBL so that when you see this table name out of context, which again is usually in the programming side of things, because when you're within access, you'll see all the tables in the table section and you'll know that they are tables. By prefixing it with TBL, if we see it anywhere out of context, we know it's a table, not a form or a query, it's a table, TBL at the front. And again, it's another object name, so it doesn't have any spaces in really for that longer term plan. Okay. We're then prompted by Access to say we haven't created a primary key, but we'll discuss primary keys in a coming lesson. So we're going to say no for the time being. And the table is created and you can see it appears on the left hand side here. And then we can close it. So we can access that table from here. We can double click it to open it. And that opens it in data entry mode. If we want to change the design upon the home ribbon first icon, there's a little set square which click takes us back into design and we can make some changes which might involve adding a new field, changing the data types, which we'll look at in the next lesson, because at the minute they're all text, or adding new fields in. So if you suddenly decide you need a new field, that can be now added in design mode. I would suggest that it's not common practice to keep adding in more fields as you build the database. You really need to get the fields in as early as possible because any change in the table structure will have a consequential knock-on effect to any queries, forms, or reports that you've created. And you'll have to change all of those as well. So a good idea is to get those table field names organized and finalized at a very early stage before you build the database. That's not to say that you can't come in and add fields if required, but it's not good practice. So that's our table. It's created in design mode. The data types we're gonna look at next. You then close the table, and it's sat there ready and raring to go. The first of your objects in your brand new database.